commissioners are on the phone, so we will go ahead and convene the agenda meeting for March 18th, 2020. Uh, would like to note that we're adding an order, um, EP 2020-0290 for good cause. Um, that'll be order number 12 uh, when we get there. Um, so the first order of business is to approve the minutes from March 11th, 2020. Are there any additions or corrections? No. No. Being no. So seeing none, all those, in, all those in favor of approving the minutes from March 11th, say aye. 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 The minutes are approved five to zero. Um, next, we need to approve the agenda minutes from March 16th, 2020, uh, just a couple days ago. Um, are there any additions or corrections to those? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda minutes from March 16th, say aye. 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 Those minutes are approved five to zero. All right, we have 12 uh, tariffs and new orders to get through this morning. Um, first up is file number WC 2020-0048. This is Anchors Point Condominium Owners Association, Inc., the complainant, V T R R Management, LLC, Frank J. Steed, Jr., DBA, Steed Communities, J.M. Land Holdings, LLC, TRR Times Share, LLC, Carol James Christensen, Kimberling Inn, Inc., and Kimberling Properties, Inc. respondents. Uh, this order sets a procedural schedule in the complaint case uh, with a one-day evidentiary hearing set for October 26th. Um, I support the order's drafted version one. Commissioner Kinney? I am in support as well. I'm in support as well. Mr. Roop? Mr. Coleman? I'm in support. Mr. Olson? Support. All right, all those in favor of approving uh, the order is drafted version one, say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. Next up, file number HT2020-0223. This is in the matter of Veolia Energy Kansas City, uh, Inc.'s adjustment to its PACC tariff. Uh, this is uh, Vicinity Energy Kansas City, formerly known as Veolia, submitted tariff sheets and testimony to revise its production adjustment cost clause rate uh, for steam service. Staff conducted a review and recommended the adjustment be approved. No other responses were received. Uh, the PACC adjustment will actually be a decrease for steam customers based on the reduced fuel cost uh, experienced by the company during 2019. I support the order as drafted, which will allow the PACC adjustments to go into effect on April 1st, and I recommend we support the, the orders drafted version 4. Commissioner Kinney? Uh, I am in support. I'm in support as well. Mr. Root? Mr. Coleman? I support the order. Mr. Olson? I support the order. All right, all those in favor of approving the order as drafted version four, say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. Next up, file number SA2020-0067. This is in the matter of Liberty Utilities Missouri Water LLC's application for a certificate of convenience and necessity authorizing it to construct, install, own, operate, maintain, control, and manage a sewer system in Cape Girardeau County, Missouri. Uh, Liberty Water is requesting a CCN to acquire the Savers Farm sewer system in Cape Girardeau. The system currently serves about 110 residential customers and is owned by the developer. Uh, right now, the homeowners don't pay a fee, uh, but Liberty wants to apply their existing rate and rules to the system, which would be about $46 a month. Uh, staff performed a review and found the system has the capacity to serve more than twice the current customers. Staff states that it may propose a capacity adjustment in a future rate case. Uh, members of the Homeowners Association were informed of the proposed acquisition according to the company, um, and they appeared to be receptive. Um, I do have some questions about this uh, that I would like someone from staff to answer if they're available. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Jim Bush is here, and uh, Gary Bangard is here as well, and we might have some people on the phone. 
Yeah, this is Travis okay. Pringle from Staff Council. Okay, thanks. Um, Liberty states in their application that they informed the homeowners association about the acquisition at their annual meeting and that they were receptive. Um, staff's report says that the information given by the company included a copy of the agenda for the homeowners association meeting in December. Did that agenda state uh, that there'd be a change in ownership and a $46 increase in rates, or did it just mention an acquisition by Liberty? Um, it's my understanding, and somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, but it was uh, what they were told that it was going to be uh, probably purchased by a uh, public entity and that if um, the rates would no longer be taken out of the homeowners association dues and that their um, rates would be somewhere probably between 40 and $60. So, okay, so they were informed that there would be a rate increase and they were given kind of a range of what they expected that to be? That is our understanding, yes. Okay, and do we know how many people were actually at that association meeting or if there was any other notice of flyers or anything that went out to these customers? I do not believe that we are aware of how many people attended or if there was any other communications. Yeah, as far as we know, it was simply the, uh, the annual meeting in December. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you for providing those answers. Um, staff recommends that the application is, should be approved and no other responses were received. Um, after reviewing the application, I think it's clear that Liberty does meet the tartan factors. Um, and I support the order granting the CCN and directing the company to provide notice upon closing and submit new tariff sheets. Uh, the order is drafted to version three. Commissioner Kinney? Uh, yes, I also support the order. Commissioner Roop? I'm in support of the order as well. Mr. Coleman? I support the order. Mr. Olson? Support the order. All right. All those in favor of approving the order as drafted version 3, say aye. 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 The order is approved 5 to 0. Thank you, uh, Jim and staff, for answering those questions. Uh, next up is file number EO 2020-0059. This is in the matter of the eighth prudence review of costs subject to the commission approved fuel adjustment clause of the Empire, Electric, uh, Empire District Electric Company. This order approves staff's findings from the prudence review for Empire's eighth fuel adjustment clause period of March 1, 2018 through August 31, 2019. Staff evaluated whether a reasonable person uh, would say that the information Empire relied on at the, in their processes when making the decisions were reasonable based on the circumstances at the time the decisions were made, and staff found that there was no imprudence on the part of Empire. No other uh, responses were received, and I support the orders drafted version one. Mr. Kinney. I support the order. Mr. Roop. I am in support. Mr. Coleman? I support the order. Mr. Holden? Support the order. All right. All those in favor of approving the order as drafted version one say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. Next up, file number GT 2020-0260. This is in the matter of Liberty Utilities Mid-States Natural Gas Corp, DBA Liberty Utilities, uh, filing of its revised weather normalization adjustment rider tariff. On February 28th, uh, Liberty Utilities filed tariff sheets to revise its weather normalization adjustment rider. This is part of their routine semi-annual adjustments. Staff reviewed the application and determined uh, that it, this will increase a typical residential customer's rate by $0.75, cents, up to $2.16 a month. Staff reviewed the filings and recommended that they be approved. No other responses were received. This order approves the tariff sheets to go into effect on April 1st. And I recommend that we approve the orders drafted version one. Mr. Kenny? I am in support of the order. Mr. Roop? I am in support. Mr. Coleman? I support the order. Mr. Olson? Support the order. All right, all those in favor of approving the orders drafted version one, say aye. 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 
tie. The order is approved five to zero. Uh, next up, file number GR 2020-0265. This is in the matter of Spire Missouri Inc., DBA Spire Missouri East and Spire Missouri West, filing of its proposed weather normalization adjustment rider tariff sheets. Uh, this order adjusts Fire's weather normalization tariff sheets. Uh, the, customer, uh, the company filed their original tariff sheets and request for an adjustment on March 3rd, but wants the adjustment to go into effect on April 1st. The company requested expedited treatment since it wants the tariff adjustments to go into effect in less than 30 days. The company indicated that neither staff nor OPC opposed this request. Staff reviewed the application and determined that this will increase the typical residential customer's monthly rate by $0.62 cents to $0.71. Cents. Staff found the tariff sheets uh, that were substituted on March 12th to be in compliance with the WNAR requirements, and no other responses were received. This order grants the request for the tariff sheets to go into effect on April 1st, and I recommend we support the order's drafted version 1. Mr. Kenney? I support the order. Mr. Root? I have decided to support the order. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Root. Commissioner Coleman? I support that compelling position of Commissioner Root, so I also support the order. Mr. Holzman? I know you're going to find this surprising, but I also support the order. Fantastic. All those in favor of approving the orders drafted version one say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. Next up, file number ER 2019-0335. This is in the matter of Union Electric Company DBA Amherst, Missouri's tariff sheets to decrease its revenues for electric service. So this is the order that approves the two stipulations and agreements that resolved uh, all but one of the contested issues. As we discussed last week, I support these agreements, and I want to commend the parties for working together to reach a good result for the customers. Uh, since we want the tariff sheets to be able to go into effect by April 1st, uh, so the customers can see the rate decrease, uh, this order finds good cause exists for the company to file compliance tariff sheets with an April 1 effective date. Um, it also delegates the judge the authority to issue either a notice or an order on the compliance tariff sheets uh, if they are unopposed. Um, again, uh, I, as, as mentioned in the case discussion, I personally see this as a uh, pretty short-term rate since they're following on with another rate case to come after, and I hope that uh, this will become the foundation of TOU rates um, on which Ameren and um, other Missouri utilities will, will build from. So with that, Commissioner Kinney? Oh, it's uh, version yeah, three. I yeah, I also support the order and appreciate the parties uh, coming to this conclusion. Mr. Roop? Uh, yeah, as I stated last week in, in uh, case discussion, I will not be supporting the order for the reasons I stated. Um, was pleased with the rate decrease, was pleased with the second stipulation, but the time of use um, default rate is way too similar to the flat rate, and I have concerns uh, about backsliding and would uh, be looking forward to the in six months to revisiting um, making that uh, default rate uh, a bigger differential than the flat rate while still providing an entry into uh, time of use rates that do not uh, cause any type of backlash uh, from the consumer. Okay, Commissioner Coleman. I support the order. Mr. Holtzman? I will be supporting the order with the caveats I listed last week, uh, agreeing with Commissioner Roop on the default rate, and also would like to see the net metered customers have access to one of the uh, time of use rates that with uh, electric vehicle charging. And I will echo that sentiment as uh, I appreciated staff and um, and the company in their responses saying that that is an issue uh, that, that they should have the IT infrastructure in place to address uh, during the next follow-on rate case. Um, but it is also important to me. So with that, um, all those in favor of approving the orders drafted version three say aye. 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 
All those opposed? No. The order is approved four to one. Next up, file number MW 2020-0288 in the matter of the investigatory case to examine the fees for the Manufactured Housing Department of the Missouri Public Service Commission. Uh, the Commission will be opening a working case to evaluate what the appropriate fees should be for services provided by the Manufactured Housing and Modular Units Program. Uh, this is not a contested case and anyone can participate in the workshop and submit documents and comments. Anyone can submit their comments or documents by going to the PSC's website and entering the information on EFIS, our electronic filing and information system, uh, for file number MW2020-0288. Um, I support the order as drafted version one. Mr. Kenny? I support the order. Mr. Roop? I am in support. Mr. Coleman? I support the order. And Commissioner Holden. Support the order. All right, all those in favor of approving the order as drafted version one say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. Next up, file number AO 2020-0184. This is in the matter of the request of Empire Elect District Electric Company and the Empire District Gas Company for a waiver of the dual branding requirement regarding the continued use of the Empire District name for electric, gas, and water operations. So Empire District Electric Company and Empire District Gas Company are requesting a waiver from the Commission's prior order in the Liberty Utilities merger case, which was EM 2016-0213. In that order, the Commission approved an agreement that required the Empire companies to continue using their Empire District names for uh, at least until 2022. Empire states that customers are already familiar with the Liberty Utilities name. The company states that continuing to use the Empire District operating name is impeding their branding goals and causing a confusing message. Uh, the companies would like to start letting customers know about the name change this May. Uh, the rollout would continue with the additional steps and transitions through April of 2021. The companies estimate the cost for the branding transition will be minimal. No one intervened in the file. Uh, staff recommended that the waiver be granted from the dual branding restriction, and I support the order and look forward to the companies updating us on their branding transition. Uh, and this is uh, version one. Commissioner Kenny, I am in support of the order. Commissioner Roop, I am in support as well. Commissioner Coleman, I support the order. And Commissioner Holt. Support the order. All right. All those in favor of approving the order as drafted version one say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. Next up, file number AO 2020-0237. This is in the matter of the application of Empire District Electric Company and Liberty Utilities Missouri Water LLC DBA Liberty Utilities for variances to enable the deployment of advanced metering infrastructure for electric and water customers. Empire District Electric Company and Liberty Utilities Missouri Water submitted tariff sheets and a request for a variance to waive the periodic meter testing requirements for those meters that will be replaced with AMI meters for both its electric and water company or water customers. The companies are looking to start deploying AMI meters in the coming month through 2021 the submitted tariff sheets would allow residential customers to opt out of the AMI meters and reduce the disconnect and reconnect fees for AMI meters. Staff recommended the tariff sheets and waiver requests be approved uh, subject to certain conditions. No other responses were received. I think it makes sense not to require testing of meters that will be replaced, and I'm happy to see both the water and electric companies making the transition to AMI meters. I support the order uh, and find good cause for allowing the tariff sheets to go into effect on April 2nd, and this is version 2. Commissioner Kenny. I support the order. I Commissioner Roop. Commissioner Coleman. I'm in support. And Commissioner Holt. Support the order. All right, all those in favor of approving the order as drafted version two, say aye. 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 
the order is approved five to zero. All right, the next two orders, are, our final two orders, are in a direct response to the current uh, COVID-19 uh, situation in the United States. Um, and I expect that we will probably see more of these um, in the coming days. Um, so we'll get to the first one, file number GE 2020-0289. This is a matter of the application of Spire Missouri, Inc., DBA Spire, for a temporary variance from rule and tariff provisions relating to late payment fees and disconnection rules and uh, a motion for expedited treatment. As I mentioned at Monday's agenda, I'm grateful for the response we've seen from our regulated utilities and how they're responding to the coronavirus pandemic. Companies like Spire are waiving the late payment fees and not disconnecting customers while we're experiencing in this state of emergency. Uh, I'm sure we'll see more of these companies following uh, and also submitting requests for a temporary variance from their rule and tariff provisions concerning late fees and disconnection for non-payment. And uh, I know that they've already committed to do these responses, but I also understand that they want to avoid any confusion between what they're doing and, uh, and what I think we as a commission support and uh, what the tariffs actually direct them to do. So I support uh, this request for a variance and approval of tariff sheets amending their late payment and disconnection rules, um, and this one is version two. Commissioner Kenny. Um, I support the order and would just uh, echo your comments regarding our regulated utilities and the measures you're taking. Commissioner Roop. Yeah, I support the order, and I, too, wanted to thank all the uh, utilities that are looking at this to see how they can uh, work with all their, their customers to have less of an impact uh, during this uh, unique time we're going through. Commissioner Coleman. I echo those comments and I support the order. Commissioner Holzman. I also agree and support the order. All right. All those in favor of approving the order as drafted version two, say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. Um, our last order for today is file number EE 2020-0290. This is in the matter of Union Electric Company, DBA, Amra, Missouri, for a variance uh, from portions of its tariff related to reconnection and late payment fees. Um, again, I can't say it enough. want to commend Amron and the other utilities uh, for voluntarily offering to take these steps. Um, they previously announced uh, in light of the coronavirus pandemic that it was spending all disconnections for non-payment and reconnecting customers. Um, yesterday, the company submitted a request for this variant, uh, and um, it's the same uh, variance as, as the last ones from uh, late fees and uh, disconnections uh, for non-payment. So they're wanting the variance to apply until it's clear that the COVID-19 outbreak is waning. Um, Amber, Missouri says it will provide at least 15 days notice to customers uh, before the fees are reinstated. Staff and public counsel both recommended the variance be approved in the initial application. I will note that after 7 p.m. last night, Amber, Missouri filed an amended application, which included their request for a variance on their gas service tariff. Uh, that's file number GE 2020-0291. Um, however, since there are concerns about the lack of time and ability to provide notice on the agenda to the parties, we won't be dealing uh, with the gas portion in this one. We'll have to do that one separately. Um, I support the order granting the variance uh, for Amber, Missouri Electric, and this is version one. Commissioner Kenny. I support the order as well. Commissioner Roop. I am in support. Commissioner Coleman? I'm in support. Commissioner Holton? I'm in support, and I'd also like to say that during a crisis like this, continuity of service is incredibly important, and I want to thank the utilities for making sure the lights stay on and the water stays clean, and as long as that stays in place, I think we're going to get through this just fine. That's for the Absolutely. Thank you for those comments. Um, all those in favor of approving the order as drafted version one, say aye. 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 The order is approved five to zero. All right. That concludes uh, the ones that we have listed for today. But as I said, um, I expect more of these variance requests 
uh, from late payment and disconnection tariff sheet um, to be coming in. So I would just ask that the commission be flexible if we need to have some brief uh, agenda meetings uh, in between our regularly scheduled agenda meetings to get them disposed of as quickly as possible, um, similar to what we did on Monday. Um, with that, we don't have any other business today other than scheduling. So uh, looking out um, today at 1030, uh, we do have the on-the-record presentation for WR2020-0053. That's Confluence River's request for a water rate increase. Um, that'll occur in room 310 with Judge Hatcher. Again, we've made uh, provisions for people to attend that remotely as much as possible. Um, so we'll be calling into that at 1030. Uh, Wednesday, March 25th, agenda at 10 a.m. Wednesday, April 1st, agenda at 10 a.m. Wednesday, April 8th, agenda at 10 a.m. Wednesday, April 15th, agenda at 10 a.m. Uh, Tuesday, April 14th, through Monday, April 20th, we have an evidentiary hearing scheduled in ER 2019-0374. That's Empire's request for authority to file tariff sheet uh, increasing rates for electric service provided to customers in its Missouri service area. That's in room 310 with Judge Clark. Um, again, depending on where we are in the uh, national situation, we'll probably try to make uh, similar provisions for people to attend remotely as much as possible. Um, April 22nd, Wednesday, agenda at 10 a.m., and Wednesday, April 29th, agenda at 10 a.m. So that gets us out through April 29th. Um, any questions, comments, or requests regarding future scheduling? No. All right. Um, Chair, well, with that, Chair, yes. I, I suspect that... Yes. You will uh, uh, let us know and remain flexible in the event that we do get a shelter-in-place order in the in the coming weeks. I mean, we, we're not sure exactly what the local or state or federal governments are going to ultimately arrive at, but we've seen what's happening in other parts of the country that that might come to us as well. Absolutely, um, you know, we will we will continue to. Uh, be flexible as we address this pandemic and, and um, working um, with our own staff in the department to uh, be as flexible on telecommuting and, and uh, remote participation and things as possible. So we will uh, keep everyone abreast as things change on that front. Uh, Thank you, any Mr. other Chairman. discussion? Yep, any other comments or discussion? Uh, regarding scheduling or anything else before we adjourn today. All right, seeing none, uh, thank you, commissioners. Again, um, if we see uh, more um, time-sensitive tariff sheets uh, that pop up because of this, um, we will work with all of your offices to try and schedule uh, pop-up meetings in between that we can call into, um, of course, still complying with all of the 24-hour notice requirements and all that. So. Um, with that, we are adjourned, um, and we can call in at uh, here in about 30 minutes for the on the record. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.